Good evening everybody and welcome to the Chrissy B Show. Now we're going to speak about a very important topic this evening and that's about relationships over Christmas. Now they can get really, really strained over the festive period. So what can you do to make Christmas with your loved ones a merry one and not a miserable one? Now my guests tonight are clinical um, psychologist Sally Austin and we also have our regular self-development clinic with Chris Brown later on. But first of all, I'd like to introduce you to our very lovely and brand new newsreader, Rihanna. Hello, Rihanna. Hi, Chrissy. It's so Hi, good everyone. to see you here. It's good to see you too. I love what you've done with your hair. Simple look, fab. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> so you tell us about yourself first of all. How old are you? What are Me? you doing? Oh, yourself? age is really nothing but a number, so let's <laughs> not go into that. See, normally <laughs> the, when you ask the young ones, they just say, oh yeah, I'm 20 this and 20 that. But, well, I am young, I you know. know. You know, I'm, I'm very young, but, you know, I just don't want to expose that. But um, okay. I do a lot of news stuff, if that makes sense. <laughs> so I'm really into like press, doing press releases and all of that. Yeah. But um, I do like to have fun. I'm a bit of a daredevil, like... Um, Are you now? Yeah. Oh, I should take you on some of my challenges then. You should. I mean, I'll be afraid. I'm like, oh, Rihanna, what are you doing here? But then I'll go through with it. You know when you have that oh. moment when you feel like your heart's just gone and you die? Yeah, I have that often since I've been doing the challenges. <laughs> <laughs> you die for a few seconds and then you're like, I'm back. Yes. So, yeah. Okay, all right, so I'll remember that. Maybe yes. the next one you'll come with me. I'd love to. <laughs> so what news do you have for us today? Wow, news, news, news. Let me tell you something, Chrissy. Did you realise, or not, not even did you realise, you know that you can drop a dress size in 30 minutes. You didn't know that, did you? Well, it's a trick, obviously, right? Well, no, it's not, because a hit girl, it's a tough kind of glamour gym, just for women. They have this new exercise regime where women come and they will exercise for half an hour and they can lose a dress size. No, that's impossible. Sorry, I don't believe it's that. It's not, because the, the exercises, they actually really, they have a lot of pumping, so you do a lot of breathing, a lot of push-ups and you so your heart's constantly racing so even though the gym session's only for half an hour but you're burning fat throughout the whole day yeah, but you can't drop a dress size in half an hour i'm sorry well, if you you're burning to... fat for the whole day i think you can lose a lot more than just dress size no, really it's got a lot of activity that. in it so that will really get it because i know for example i know that the you know when blokes want to look a bit sort of muscly and stuff they do their quick press-ups don't they because you do kind of expand after yeah you but just, men they're doing like, that's going bulky. they're sort of getting more you like, get bulky, but with women, because it's only half an hour, there's a lot of like little exercise toys that they use. Some medicine pumps, you have those trampoline things yeah. and those big balls. Yeah, so still, you can't. I'm sorry, you I get don't believe working. it. I'm sorry, I don't believe <laughs> we it. We should put you up to that challenge. <laughs> <laughs> what are you trying to say? Well, um, no, because you said you like challenges and you don't believe losing a dress size, you know, it could be a challenge, you never know. Oh, okay, <laughs> alright, I would, I would give it a go. You should. As long as it doesn't, doesn't kill me. It won't, but that's <laughs> not the only thing, because yeah. women have all these things about losing weight and they want to do it quick, they want to do it fast. Yeah. So, we have another concept. Hang on, which I do not believe in, by the way, I think <laughs> it's the wrong way to lose weight. You need to take your time and do it properly. And do exercises. Yes. I've lost four kilos. Have you? Or like eight pounds in, in about eight pounds. In. But yes, what did just you by, do? Was it just all those by cutting down? No, mm. just by cutting down, not eating carbs after six, uh, six o'clock. I still eat in the evening, but I don't eat sort of all the pasta and all that stuff. And I tried like that for about, it lasted five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm interrupting you and you're yes, you still But anyway, you can stink yourself slim. Stink yourself. Yes. <laughs> it's a new concept, <laughs> like this brainchild businesswoman, Alex Fontaine, I think her name is. Mm -hmm. She discovered a way of putting herself off of food. She had this weird craving for chocolate, but the moment she got that whiff of really bad smell, it just put her off. She was all nauseated and the thought of food died. But where does completely. the steak come from? She, um, I'm scared well, to at, ask first, <laughs> at first, she was at this really plush event. Yeah. And they were outside, her and her friend, before going inside to have something to eat. They were outside enjoying the sun. As soon as they walked in, there was an awful smell and it just cut off their appetite. They didn't want to eat anymore. And then she thought, wait a minute, that's a great idea because I don't even want to eat, so I could lose weight in doing that. So she created this um, little perfume thing. It smells like rotting cabbage. Oh, no. So imagine spraying that if you want to you know, indulge yourself in that lovely juicy chocolate cake the one that makes you feel <laughs> fat actually, just by looking at it. It sounds ridiculous but it's actually quite clever. In, it in is because imagine sense, you, you don't feel like eat. eating when something stinks. <laughs> so it's just going to put you off. The thought of food will just be I, I don't want to know. Oh. I'm not interested. I don't want to have it. 
Okay. What do you think of that one? <laughs> As I said, very strange, but it kind of makes sense. Yes. I think it's good, but... Because no one wants to eat in a no, stinky environment, do they? Not at all. Even those who love food like myself. But, you know, once you smell something bad, completely put off. Oh. <laughs> but anyway, enough about diets, because we do love our food here. We're not against food. Let's go into fashion. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> our lovely Kate, the Duchess of Cambridge. I love her. I think she's so fab. She's elegant. Mm -hmm. um, I discovered that women in Britain, about 56% of women, they don't change their style. In like five years, they just keep the same style, the same makeup, and they don't have a problem with it. <laughs> but it's a bit weird. How do you become modern if you're going to keep the same style? Mm -hmm. Do they want to be safe? Instead of sorry, I think it's com comfort zone, isn't it? Because it is a scary thing to to change something about yourself. It can be, mm. but then you have those chameleons like Rihanna, Miley Cyrus. I mean, mm. they just go for the chop, jump. One they side do, they're gone. Very, it's, yeah. It's so, true. what is it a thing that young people can go and get crazy, get wild, and then mm. the um, those that are more mature, they keep it safe. But what's it got to do with Kate, by the way? Because Kate has kept the same style for five years. Oh. She has I kept see. the same simple. Well, I prefer her style elegant. to the one next to her. Hang on, let's, let's take, <laughs> take a look at the picture again. Okay. Now, you see, at first she was elegant, Miley, but then after a while she thought, I want to go for a change. <laughs> that, that's too much of a drastic. It was dramatic. It's just, it's too much from one extreme to another. But then again, a lot of young people seem to be doing that. They go from one extreme to another. It's yeah. almost like they don't want to be recognised. Mm -hmm. But then people like Kate and those who admire her, which is like 65% of women, they've decided to follow the same trend. So they've kept the same style of makeup for five years, the same style of hair, clothing, because they want to be safe mm. and not sorry. And it gets them what they, you know, where they want to go, keeps them looking good and fresh. You don't always need to do something crazy. But it, but it is so nice to change things around a bit. You just sort Slight of get more like exciting. And but not it? to the extreme. I, I Five agree. years is a long time, though. It is, but, yeah. you know. Especially if you're sort of getting older as well, to keep the sort of same style that you had <laughs> when you were in your 20s and now you're but in your 40s. You can look. pull it off. So to, yeah, but you have to kind of mix it up a you little bit, to, do something. You've got to see. Yeah. Maybe if you're not used to wearing that big kind of necklace, like, I hate necklaces, to be Please. quite honest. I prefer a scarf. I'm going to make you wear them now. <gasps> oh, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but I have discovered, like, you know those long ones, like what you have, that just throw it on. It works, yeah. you know, it's not tight, it's not irritating, so. But it's a damn bit plain Jane, stripes and necklaces don't go, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so Kate, we'll be looking forward to your new style very soon. Hopefully, Hopefully. I mean, she's just had baby George, so I think she'll be changing anything soon. Yeah. But we do love you, Kate, we really do. <laughs> and, you know, they say, okay, I don't know if they really say this, but I'll just say they do say it. Many people think if you're with one partner, one person for all your life, it's you know, strange, it's odd, it's boring. However, there are women who they've only had one partner and they're happier than their friends who've had several relationships, mm -hmm. several partners. But then people seem to argue that, oh, but that's old fashioned and it's boring. It's not boring. How can you say it's boring? You have to make it exciting. Doesn't mean if you change partner, it's going to be more exciting. You just got to keep the fire weird. burning, you know. What, but why? Why would people think that? Why do they think if you if you have that one special person, probably met them through high school, and you've gone the whole way, got married just with that person, they think you haven't experienced life, you haven't had fun, you haven't seen. Well, other I, people. I met my husband you know when, when when I was eighteen. He was my first proper boyfriend, and I'm not bored of him. Exactly. So it's lovely. It's, it's, it's lovely. It's lovely. But to why have don't we with. see those kind of I don't know examples? They don't throw it out there like, yeah, he was my first boyfriend, and we've been together since. We're married. We have a lovely family. But yeah. we always see that. Yeah, we met five minutes and then married for five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> I think. Because I don't works. think people want to make the effort anymore. Uh, that's. I think that's the bottom line because they think, oh, you know. As soon as they see a sign of a little problem, instead of they working are. on the relationship and stuff, they say, okay, this one's not working, let me go to the next one. Mm. But the thing is, people aren't happy that way. They're not. And you, everything is, every, every relationship that you go through is all, you end up with baggage. So, you know, speaking to friends and stuff that have been yeah. through that, it's like they, you sort of get a lot of baggage along the way and maybe some complexes here and complexes there and different things go wrong. So you end up with all this baggage. Mm. Instead of working at one and like making sure that it works, obviously there are times when you know you should separate from yeah. a person depending on what the situation is. But you need to make a have a go first of all, not make just give up effort. at the first sign of of trouble because relationships are going to go through rocky periods. Yeah, but then when yeah. they see the rocky periods, they just 
throw in the towel, white flag, let's give up. Yeah. And then the whole concept of marriage goes down the drain. Do you have a boyfriend? Well, Chrissy. <laughs> I'll find <laughs> out later, don't twin. worry. I'm going to interrogate her later to find out. Please don't and then I'll let me. you guys know at home. <laughs> and now. So we're going to see where she changes the subject. <laughs> Oh, that was quick. <laughs> yeah, well, you know normally... How long do we have? Sorry, street. I didn't hear what they said to me. I don't know how long we've got. Give us we've got two minutes. Can <gasps> we fit another one minutes? in two minutes? I can. Well, this will only take two minutes anyway. Oxford Street. Walk down there, you see all these mannequins that are stick thin. It's the norm. Size 10, apparently, is the average size for women. But Debenhams have gone against that mm. because they have introduced the size 16 model and it's just going to go all across. They've started it in Oxford Street and then it's going to spread to 170 stores. Yeah. I quite like that because now it gives women confidence about their body. They don't, they're not going to feel like, oh, I have to be stick thin to be beautiful because it's like the concept of beauty goes one way. Mm -hmm. You're slim, you're beautiful. Bigger than a size 10, you're not. I mean, I'm not a size 10. Anymore. <laughs> I've, asked her, I've asked her age, I've asked her if she has a boyfriend. What size are you? No one, it's okay. <laughs> well, I'm not a size 10 anymore, unfortunately. Oh. I cried, but I feel great, you know. Reading and you look this great, thing. darling. Yeah, I feel healthy. I feel round. <laughs> <laughs> Don't quite know what that means, but it's nice. <laughs> Big is beautiful. <laughs> I said, I'm going to have a laugh with this one. <laughs> but it, it is. And for someone, a store size is a beautiful thing. You've just got, you just you got, got to be mean? comfortable. Yeah. We, we discussed this on Friday with Excel as well. And to be honest, I don't... Okay, I think it's good that they've got the mannequins, but at the same time, in a size 16, but at the same time, there's so many different sizes and shapes and, you know, All heights sorts, and everything. Yeah. So it's like... How, how we're going to have mannequins for everything. I just think people just need to be comfortable with who they are. If you're not happy with your size, change it. You can change it. Yeah. But if you just are, don't just, nip and tuck. Yeah. Exercise like we spoke about in the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> Rihanna, you've been fabulous, my darling. Bye. Oh my yes. gosh. Well, I feel fab. And we'll see you again next time on the show. Yeah. I'm fab. You're fab. We're all fab. <laughs> Thank you very much. So afterwards, we're going, after the break, we're going to be speaking to psychologist Sally Austin. And we're going to be speaking about the stresses that people have over Christmas, because there are many reasons why Christmas is a very stressful period, and we're going to be discussing that after this break. So do join us. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show, always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. Welcome back to the show. So how can you have a Merry Christmas and not a miserable one? So here to talk about this with me, we have psychologist Sally Austin. Hello. Hello nice again. to see you back. Thank you for having me back. It's, it's lovely, lovely to be here. Oh, it's great to have you back. So Sally, it's Christmas, very stressful time. Shouldn't be. Ideally, we see all these lovely adverts on TV, don't we, mm -hmm. about the family gathered around the Christmas table and everyone's mm -hmm. laughing and having a lovely time. But in reality, it's not quite like that, is I it? Know. But before you ask me that, you're supposed to ask me about weight loss. I was, wasn't I? Yes, we're discussing this during the break. Now, you've lost quite a bit of weight I've lately. lost quite a lot of weight from a rather unorthodox way. <laughs> I've had braces fitted to my teeth a couple of months ago and... It's just such hard work eating. It you is, get I bits remember. Of food stuck, it hurts. Um, so I've just given up eating because I cannot be bothered. It's absolutely great. You can great. have soup through a straw. You can have soup through a straw, but it, it has to be virtually cold because your tongue gets a bit sore as well. Yeah. So that works perfectly. The downside is that I, herself, I managed her. to get my braces stuck on the bottom of my lip <laughs> and bite my lip. So thank you. Sorry, I shouldn't laugh. So it's <laughs> free. <laughs> I've never, you know, I'm usually clumsy, oh, but that was, that was quite superb. So Aww. thank you to the makeup artist who helped me out with a bit of uh, <laughs> dab and dib. So, <laughs> well, you're still looking gorgeous, my thank darling. Thank you. And by Christmas, hopefully, hopefully the, uh, the scab will be gone. <laughs> Just make so, sure you don't bite yourself again. That's I will. The only thing. I will. I'll have my Christmas dinner sort of liquidised and, as you say, and a nice tepid soup. <laughs> So sorry. Well, anyway, <laughs> I interrupted you. Christmas. That's okay. Yes, Christmas, because there's so many. We were, I was just going through some of the reasons why people get stressed. Let's go through a few of them and maybe mm. sort of discuss ways that you can kind of get over that. Obviously, one of the big stresses that people have and they get really upset is because they're spending more money at this time. And many people, they spend more than they actually should and more, more than they can actually afford. And mm. that obviously mm. is very stressful you want to like you were saying before to me high expectations yeah yeah 
And it's such a shame, isn't it? Because I don't think anybody really expects this amazing, expensive present. Mm. You know, that's not what really touches people. They want a little trinket that's been very carefully chosen. Um, you know, my dad used to say he didn't mind what it was as long as it was wrapped nicely and it had his name on. Oh, and it bliss. made he felt special. Yeah. And I think that's really important. But yeah, I think we often, you know, overdo this expenditure, overdo the stuff. You know, you don't need new baubles every Christmas. You know, <laughs> they can old... be really expensive, can't they? Exactly. And your old yeah. baubles are lovely. Your old baubles have a tradition. You can go, oh, do you remember last year when we had those baubles? You know, or you make things yourself. So, yeah. no, it all needs to be toned down a bit, doesn't it? It's It's got a bit daft and a bit unnecessarily expensive. And Yeah. We had the same, I remember growing up, we had the same decorations year in, year out. We never changed them. <laughs> the same angel on the top of the tree. Yeah. It was, it but was I think that's a, rather lovely, you yeah. know, when the angel begins to sort of fade and wilt. <laughs> but it's kind yeah. of got happy memories. It's I mean, true, it does. Yeah. Yeah, sort of the more battered, the more loved, you know, like the Velveteen Rabbit story that only if this rabbit was all tatty had it shown that he'd been loved enough. Yeah, it's um, true. Had he been pristine, then he'd have been all it's true. You know, too fussy. But this is like a, a bit, I mean, we did do a whole show on this, actually, so I won't cover too much on, on the spending part of that. And if you missed that, you can catch that on our YouTube channel, um, Chrissy B Show. Now, another stress, obviously, the kids are at home. Mm -hmm. I don't have children, but I, I sympathise with mums that, that do. I mean, they're lovely. I love kids and everything. But when you're used to sort of maybe being in a certain routine, all of a sudden the kids are at home and you've got to be thinking of things to keep them occupied. And they can be, it can be quite a stressful time for parents, can't it? It can. And I think probably what you said, the idea that they have to keep them occupied mm. is probably the main stressor. That actually, I think kids need to have a balance of being occupied but then also learning how to cope with their own boredom and how to entertain oh, themselves. So a child that is constantly entertained won't learn how to entertain themselves. They won't mm -hmm. learn. And, and actually through boredom is the new idea. You know, if you're entertaining your child, then it's all your ideas. But if you've got two little bored ones, eventually one of them's gonna come up with the idea of building a den or, you know, pretending to be a vet or something. <laughs> and then their imagination goes. Um, you know, and then you've got something beautiful that, that us as adults couldn't have created because it required their imaginations. So I think learning to tolerate boredom, but also the imagination that comes out of boredom is very that's, special. That's quite an interesting point, actually, because sometimes that, that will just take away the stress. Just leave them in a room on their own with a few, with a few boxes yeah. <laughs> and just say, create something. And, and then, they usually and do. They do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even and it's usually amazing and, and beautiful and you'd never have come across it yourself. Oh, I remember, sorry, just bringing back some really nice memories to me now. I remember me and my sister, we had bunk beds, so we used to pretend that it was a ship and that there were sharks everywhere and that we were, you know, in the sea and you know, it just brought some back some lovely memories. It was really nice. Absolutely. Yeah. And bunk beds are great for making dens with because yeah, you put the, put the blankets down and you're in a <laughs> den, aren't you? We used to. You know, and then some people are allowed in and some people aren't. And Yeah, you know. it's true. Oh, so, that's nice. I think one thing that is important with kids is also to get a good mixture of indoors and outdoors. I think mm. even the most beautifully behaved kids with the most innovative parents, too much indoors and they go slightly mad. <laughs> um, you know, so I think you do need a, a good mixture of that. And that can be hard if you're, if you're a bit... It ties them out as well, doesn't it? If you, if you're, <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. a good trick. Take <laughs> them out, tie them out, and then they'll be fine when they get in, they'll just sleep. <laughs> I think some people are a bit averse to the cold, aren't they? They're sort of like, oh, Christmas, be better stay in, yeah. unless it's snowy when you are allowed to go out. Mm -hmm. But no, they need to go out, they need to run, you need to go out and run and fidget and that's, so that's a good right. mixture of in yeah, and out, mixture. a good mixture of entertaining them and then not entertaining them. Yeah, okay, um, good point. <laughs> now the other one, we've kind of covered this one but maybe you'd have something more to say about it Sally, wanting to please everyone especially on Christmas Day. Yes. I think this is it's hard because yeah. especially if you're the one hosting the Christmas dinner or yeah. you know, whatever special dinner is, it's, it's really like yeah. it's really stressful. I think it's worth assuming it's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> you aren't going to please all the people all the time because part of your family likes being quiet, the other part likes being noisy. Mm. Part of your family are going to want their meal first things, the other part last. You know, whether it's you opening the presents everyone, early, opening you. the presents later. Some people just aren't going to want to be there full stop and it's nothing to do with anything that you've done. You, you know, you've, as far as they're concerned, this is as good a meal as they wanted. It's as good an environment, but they just don't like Christmas or they just mm -hmm. don't want to be there. Or they, so mm -hmm. I think whatever you do, you will not please all the people all the time. 
um, and if you can kind of lower all of your expectations um, <laughs> and just think, you know, if, if most of us have a mostly good time, then I've done a good job. Mm. Um, you know, and if I can avoid any kind of great disasters of burning the house down or, you know, I don't know, tripping over Auntie Mabel with the lead to the, to the game or whatever. Yeah. But no, expectations need to come right down. You know, life is, there's a lovely saying, which I, I don't think I've used with you yet, <laughs> so I'll bring it out now, which is um, happiness is seven plus or minus two. And it's a ridiculous kind of mathematical thing. But if you mm. have your feelings from naught, which is completely awful, the worst yeah. life could ever be, get, to ten, which is just miraculous, then a good enough, around your average, most people would say seven, happy at seven. Mm -hmm. plus or minus two. Mm -hmm. So most people, if you asked a thousand people, they would say somewhere between five and nine, with most people saying seven. Right. So you, we have moments of ten, but they're, they're glimpses and moments. We don't live at ten all the mm -hmm. time. That's true. The whole of Christmas Day won't be a ten out of ten. <laughs> And if you think it's going to, you know, it's just going to be mad. If expectations a bit lower than anything yeah. else is a bonus, if it's better, it's a bonus. Oh, it was a great yeah. one. But if you're really like, so if not you're, that you're expecting disaster, let's not go the other completely the other way. You're not expecting everything to go wrong, no. but there are things that you know, there's things that you haven't thought yeah. about that might happen. Yeah. Or someone says something they shouldn't at the dinner table. This it's always got to. Ooh, that's <laughs> it's always, always a good happen. one, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Which kind of brings us on to the next one: alcohol. <laughs> Obviously, there's mm. a lot of booze around normally at Christmas, depending on the type of family you have. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember my husband actually speaking to me about this, that his sort of family gatherings were quite bad because at the time his, his mother was an alcoholic, his grandmother was an alcoholic, his grandfather was an alcoholic. So imagine the three of them and then other family coming round. And it starts off really nice. And mm. I was a witness to this because I joined mm. the family, obviously, I was a witness to this. Everything started off okay and funny mm. and jovial. We have a really good time dancing and everything. And then obviously drink too many and then the past comes up mm. and then people start arguing and then it's just a big fight. It was, it was pretty bad. And I think that's something that if you're hosting a Christmas dinner, you know there's certain people, for example, that have disagreements all the time, maybe put them sitting not so close to each other, or limit the alcohol even. Yeah. You know, it depends. You need to try to do a bit of damage control as well, I think. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree. You know, think of your seating arrangements, think of, your, think of how you can limit the alcohol. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, you know, be a bit radical. Don't invite them for the whole day. You know, why, mm, yeah. why, do, why is there an assumption that somebody with, should arrive at 10 and stay till 10 at night? If you've got a family that doesn't last well together, then, then have a lunch finished or, you know, pop over and see them and pop back out again. You know, things become a tradition, not, not always because they're a good idea, just because nobody's brave enough to change the plan. Mm. Um, I can't bear being with people who drink too much. I like a drink. Mm -hmm. but too drunk and and it's of it no fun. It everything, yeah. doesn't it? It's yeah. embarrassing um, and... I just and worry say. about them and, you know, yeah. so, so no, arrange it so that you don't have to spend the whole day with people if they get, sort of, they go really nice and then they go downhill. Mm. Um, or make a rule that, you, you know, if it's your house, right, we're <coughs> having an alcohol-free Christmas. My house, mm. my rules. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Why not? Why not change it? If it's it, your you house, know. it's true. Yeah. And uh, with, with us as well, we, we used to sort of go around to my aunties and stuff for Christmas, but there were times that my dad would just say, look, you know what, I just want to spend it at home with just my wife and my two, my two daughters. And we used to do that as well. Mm. And actually, sometimes I preferred that. Yeah. Because I didn't, I hated sort of leaving the house sometimes on Christmas Day to go to someone else's house and everything. So sometimes, you know, if you, you don't mm. have to spend it with the whole... All yeah. your relatives all the time. You can have, in, mm. if people get offended, you know, what can you do? Just tell them, sorry, I've just wanted a quiet one this year. You don't have to feel, because mm. the thing is, you should want to go somewhere as well sometimes, not mm. feel like you should mm. or obliged mm. to. Mm. And maybe that's even going to be less stressful for the person that you were going to spend it with, yeah. perhaps. And I think it can be quite valuing to somebody to say, you know, I'm not going to have a massive everybody together Christmas this year because I'd really like to see you all in smaller groups so that I can actually talk to you properly. But let's, you know, so it doesn't all have to happen on December the 25th. Mm. Um, you know, I've had Christmas on lovely days that haven't been December the, yeah. December the 25th. One of the best I ever had was July the 24th. Oh. Um, and we just decided we need, you know, we'd missed Christmas, we needed to do Christmas. 
So we got everything out again. There you go, everybody. Have Christmas on the 24th of July. That's great advice. You know, I love that. That's really good. You, know, like, gonna... you can have it on this day, this day, <laughs> this true. day. It's true. It's just you? the day, isn't it? It's just to get together with the family. Well, we're going to go to a quick break and then afterwards we're going to discuss more about relationship stresses over Christmas and how to avoid them if you can. Don't forget to subscribe to The Chrissy B Show. Always aiming to show you the happier side of life. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Welcome back and we're still here with Sally Austin and we've been discussing relationship stresses over Christmas. Now, um, one of the things as well that obviously sometimes can be a bit difficult is when family members haven't seen each other for a long time and sometimes it's great depending on the, the type of family you may have it's wonderful you know you catch up on things and stuff but then there could also be like unresolved issues between people now i think with this one sometimes you the person may be hosting the christmas dinner or celebration or whatever they may start dreading it dreading mm. the day and oh god what's going to happen when these two get together but at the same time i think we need to look at things differently and actually think well okay maybe this is an opportunity to get people talking again to get you know things mm. the ball rolling again and maybe bringing the family closer so there's always that chance that we can't always <clears throat> look at things in a negative way and think it's all going to go wrong because there are times when actually this could bring everything together yeah i think if if a relationship has been defined by that problem so you know every time you think of of bob and jane all you can think about is that problem between them or that history or mm. what happens if you bring auntie mabel and she meets uncle jim I think that's that's the hard thing is when it's become a focus mm -hmm. and I think what you can aim to do at your Christmas is to give that relationship other things to think about so if you can introduce the funniest ever game of Scrabble or the most lovely I don't know silly competition design your own uh, wrapping paper mm -hmm. then that relationship can be remembered for something else yeah. as well so do you remember Absolutely. the time Bob and Jane got in a pickle when they were playing Twister, Twister. you know, <laughs> so, that, so it gives that relationship a different history and a different mm -hmm. something. And I think, you know, I don't think December the 25th is a good day for people to start, you know, doing therapy and, and getting things off the chest because they're tired, they're, they're, they've got ridiculous expectations, they've probably uh, had a few to drink. Mm -hmm. um, but if you could just pin something else to that, that relationship, to that to that sort to of remember the good system. times, how it yeah. used to be, for example. Yeah, isn't it? yeah. My family yeah. did a lovely thing for years, which was, um, do you remember it's a knockout? And you yeah. had all these different sports. Well, we would use every game in the house on it's a knockout. And you'd have teams and you could play your joker. But it would be, um, we had indoor darts, we had twister, we had this little game where you had to shoot things. Mm -hmm. We had one of those shove hapenies. And you all had to move around and keep changing teams. And it was lovely because there was always something to talk about. There was always something to remember, you know. So my dad being phenomenally violent on the little <laughs> gun game, despite being the most mellow creature out. So there's a lot of, um, a lot of things that you can do that are just different from the relationship problem. Mm. Um, and maybe as a host, rather than keep, you know, the perfect meal, the perfect presence, the perfect everything, maybe focus a bit on the activities. What, what would you do if that looked like it was getting a bit heated or difficult how would you move that on yeah. so have a few games have a few family photos if that feels safe um, <laughs> it might not be <laughs> but keep things moving in a sort yeah. of uh, ac in, your, in a behavior way so you can't get fixed on your head or your your anger or whatever mm, definitely mm. and i think sometimes the focus is on ourselves too much at christmas as well definitely so, and there definitely. are i think it's really really important and i said this you know last year when we were speaking about christmas as well it's really important to look out for others around you as well like check on your neighbor maybe that elderly neighbor that's on their own they don't have anyone for example visiting them there's you getting all these people coming to your house and they maybe don't have any visitors you could invite them around for a drink maybe or mm. or even mm. if it's just for dessert just to just so they're not by themselves because some people you'd be you'd be surprised at what they're going through and they just don't maybe they've just lost someone for example they're bereaved you don't know mm. what they're going for. They're probably really depressed. And just the fact that you knock on their door, even just to say hello or give them something to eat, mm. that would mm. be wonderful for them. Absolutely. I think you're right. We, we so 
get caught up on this sort of idea of sweating the small stuff, isn't it? It's, mm -hmm. Oh no, my Yorkshire pudding sank. Well, you know, come off it. Does it matter? <laughs> it's not a disaster. Yeah. You know, right. there are people for whom Christmas is just something they dread. Um, yeah. You know, because they don't like themselves or because they're in an unhappy family or they're mm -hmm. feeling lonely. Um, you know, I, a, a bar, big part of my job is in mental health. Um, I've got a number of patients who will start dreading it from here in because, the, you know, they've got to be the right size, wear the right dress. They've got to, you know, be part of this sort of perfect family. And for a lot of people, it's just horrible. And for them, it's maybe just a case of getting through it yeah. or picking a piece that they can tolerate and choosing just to be part of that bit of Christmas. So if you love the carol singing, go and do that. But if you yeah. hate watching kids queue up to Father Christmas, then avoid all of the, <laughs> the garden centres for that period, you know, because yeah. that's what they're going to be doing. Yeah. But yeah, I think it's really important to to realise that Christmas isn't for everybody because they've got their own stuff on. Mm -hmm. And Christmas is, isn't for everybody because it may be a religious or a cultural difference That's as well. Right, you know, yeah. there's, Not everyone there's, celebrates it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. for, for some people it's just not going to be their thing. Some cultures are going to be having their own celebrations, mm -hmm. so you know, festivals of light that are around the same time and that can be lovely. Uh, some, for some religions and cultures it's really not appropriate for them, they don't want to be part mm -hmm. of it. And we need to kind of celebrate that with everybody, whether whether it's formally Christmas or whether mm. it's that time of year or whether it's just the relationships we have with people yeah. that are nothing to do with that's, December that's the twenty fifth. Thing is like what you know, our family and spending time with people and also thinking of others as well. That's the, the main thing that it's about. But let's take a look at a, a video that we recorded when we went to visit an old people's home um, during the festive period to try and bring a little bit of sparkle to people's lives. Today we're at the Dr French Care Home and we're here today to spread a little festive cheer because we've got a little surprise for the people, haven't we, Bob? Yeah, we're going to be giving them mince pies, we're going to be having someone singing to them, old classics by Frank Starr. Baked a cake as well, my famous pineapple cake, which you can find on my YouTube channel, but more on that later. Joanna, what are you going to do? Are you going to do a little dance or something? Perhaps. <laughs> well, you have to stay tuned to check out then. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to go and just prep the food for now and then you can join us in there and we're going to meet Frank Starr as well who's going to be singing some old classics and Frank Sinatra songs, right? So, see you in there! Where the treetops glisten And children listen To hear we're heating up the mince pies and we're just plating everything up and then we're going to take it through to them. So we're going to give it to the staff here, they're really good, the parents here. They look like they love the old people a lot, so we'll give them some mince pies as well. Oh yeah, this is my pineapple cake that I made last night, so hopefully the chaps in there will like it. And if they don't, we'll eat it. Chrissy B show, we're bringing you some mince pies and some biscuits and stuff and we're going to, if you want a hand massage, we're going to come over and give it to you. And the show we're actually putting together is all to do with giving, so we'd like to sort of hear your take on that and, you know, why it's important to be a giving person and stuff like that and if things have changed over the years as well. We'll also be having Frank, Frank Starr who will be singing some, you know, classic tunes to you. So I'll hand it over to Frank now. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, ladies. What's supposed to be happening now? Well, we're going to give you some cake and stuff. If we're going to go around and also give some hand mass massages if you want, just to spend the afternoon with you, really. Oh, and then the en and Frank's going to do the entertainment. Nice, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm dreaming of a wild Christmas. With every Christmas card we ride. I think it's taken a shine to her. Yes. Yes, that's right. <laughs> and I think it's 
really important for people to remember others at this time of year, or actually any time of year, because a lot of people have forgotten about it. So if you do have a neighbour, for example, an elderly neighbour, and they really do appreciate it as well, because a lot of these people, they don't have anyone to talk to, you know, they're all by themselves, so I'm sure you could spread a little festive cheer. Okay, I'm here with Frank Starr, who's been singing some Frank Sinatra songs and some Christmas songs. Did you have fun, Frank? Wonderful, yeah. When are, you, uh, when are we coming back? That's what I'm going to say. No, you came all the way from Bristol to sing to these lovely people here. What, what puts that sort of joy in your heart to come here and do this for people? Oh, just actually, you touched on it then, the joy of making people happy, whatever age. Now, Frank, I noticed that you pay particular attention to one lovely lady. Did you take a shine to her or something? Well, if I... Singing to her an awful lot. Yes, if I perhaps was uh, a little bit younger, yes. I think that's our exit to leave now. <laughs> Frank, thank you so much for joining us today and for singing to these lovely people. Very, very welcome, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>
Really? Yes. Your nervous system does know the difference between I reality and fiction. Yeah, mm. it's interesting because now if you've got a particular fear, um, you automatically play out the worst scenario in your head. Mm -hmm. So your nervous system kicks in and you're going to be really scared. Okay. Right, right. Now, if you could trick it back into another thing that you're not actually scared of it, just much to what we were saying week four about words as well, yeah, yeah. and actually play it the other way, you can actually overcome fears like that. You can overcome scenarios. You can overcome that interview situation mm. because you played it out differently and you've told your nervous system something completely different. So I know it's kind of funny and strange, but I'll spare it because it goes with um, number two, which is um, taking control. Mm. Now, think about this. If your nervous system is the one listening to your brain, then you've got to think, who is the master? Master or servant, which one? You know, mm. what sort of thoughts do you allow to dominate your mind? Is it thoughts of fear? Well, if it is, then you're the servant mm. to your brain instead, you know, your nervous system. Or if it's the other way around, no, I'm not afraid of that. I'm gonna go ahead and do this. It's gonna be beautiful. It's gonna be really nice. I'm gonna self-talk myself into it. Sounds like a crazy thing. You'll look yeah. a bit crazy <laughs> to people, yeah. but it works at the end of the day because master servant. So you should servant, just say it, say it out loud and say, say it I'm not. Say it you believe it and mm -hmm. to the point that you actually feel the emotion inside of you. Because sometimes we can say words on the outside and it's just happening out there, but actually believe in it. Like sometimes, you think about when you was a child and you got excited about Christmas. I can actually mm -hmm. remember that. And that, yeah, that feeling yeah. inside where, oh, it's, oh, you know, when you kind of believed in Father Christmas, <laughs> that sort of thing, you know, until somebody said, all right? There might be kids watching the show. Oh, okay. What? I think well, we didn't say anything. It wasn't snap. talking about Father Christmas. No, 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 no that one. Anyway, <laughs> but when you believe that, you got excited about certain mm -hmm. things and it triggered an emotion inside of you that made you react a certain way. Exactly the same thing. Yeah. If you can capture that when you say certain areas, you can actually dominate and be the one, the master instead of the servant. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Now, yeah. taking control also is about allowing the sort of thoughts that enter your mind, right? And we can't actually prevent thoughts from entering our mind, but we can replace the thoughts that are in our mind with the positive things mm -hmm. and the good things. So you're going to the interview, automatically, oh, am I looking right? Is there something wrong with my face? Oh, this, that, and the other. And they're interviewing, and they're looking at you, thinking about a hundred other things. You could replace those thoughts about the actual interview and the outcome as mm -hmm. well. Your confidence level goes up. You'll be more paced when you're speaking as well. And chances are you'll project the right image mm. and do a lot better at the yeah. end of the day yeah so it's really funny because these seem like simple things but change your thinking does actually change your life you know it seems like they're in a it's, catchphrase it's quite, um i can imagine sort of someone that has been thinking negatively for a long time it, it, i suppose it's quite difficult to to change your thinking in, in a sense if you're so used to thinking in a certain way how do you actually kind of not almost force your mind to start thinking differently. What would you need right, to I'd do? Say to it's think? Is it just does it come with time or? It's a say? bit of um, you just use the apt, apt word about forcing yourself towards that. Mm. Now, all right, someone's had a traumatic past or something. Like, I'm not saying bury it and put it behind because if you bury it, it's going to stay there for quite a while. You've yeah. got to get it out or talk to someone about it. Mm -hmm. But with that, that's where the replacing comes in place. Mm -hmm. So I know, just say I had this fear of water and this water's going to fall. Well, I'm going to actually embrace that instead and start thinking about well, how beautiful that water's actually going to be. I mean, that sort of thing instead. Mm -hmm. Until I can actually get to that point where I can actually touch it and get there part way mm -hmm. through. It seems hard, but it is very easy in another sense. Why did I say that just now? It seems hard because that's the fear, but it is actually easy. I'm talking myself into it, so it mm -hmm. will happen. Yeah? And I'm not just going to say someone just jump up and just jump in there. It takes a lot of um, time. Yeah. But the instant thing, the instant ones are the job interviews, um, the fear of driving, the fear of passing a test, these sort of fears. These ones, you can actually deal with that yeah. by changing yeah. your self-talk. And in your self-talk as well, let's think about this. You as athletes winning. An athlete is actually trained to actually visualize what it's gonna do before they've actually finished the race to the point of not just finishing the race, of actually being on the rostrum and receiving the gold medal. Mm -hmm. And they've been programmed that way to win already. So now if they program that way to win, they use it to actually change their thoughts, the nervous system back to that, their performance is gonna be a lot higher. So they've got coaches who work with them saying, well look, you've got to see it this way, you've got to see that way, all the boxes, you've got to see this one, you've got to see that way. Mm -hmm. And they start to believe it after a while at the end of the day. Now here's another thing as well, which actually proven it's true. You think of the many um, top celebrities or top singers that they've got footage of them when they were young. They were probably singing with a brush in front of a mirror. Yes, 
that's what, exactly what they were doing. Mm. They were actually dominating, changing the life of the master, and it became a reality in their life. Whether you're a top speaker, whether you're a top interviewer, you know, presenter, whatever, you've played that through at some time or another, and then the rest yeah. has directed itself that way. I mean, so sometimes it's really when important. you see these <coughs> boxes before, before oh. the, the fight or like athletes, when they're speaking, you think, God, they're so arrogant <laughs> in a way. But at the same time, why would you go into a competition thinking that you're going to lose yeah. at the oh, end of the I day? Oh, when I lose that fight and what's yeah. going to happen to me yeah. when I hit you the truly, deck? But <laughs> so in the, on one hand, it seems a bit like, oh, God, they're, they're so like, big-headed. But, yeah. at the same, but the, on the other hand, they need to believe that. Well, who did that they mainly? You just mentioned that. Yeah, yeah. Um, Muhammad Ali. He mm -hmm. was known for that sort of bragging and bravado and all that. Not to say that he was saying that this is who I am really, yeah. but it was proven at the end of the day. Well, I have to say, there it? was one I was really glad when he got knocked out. I won't say who it is because he was just too, he was <laughs> over the top. I was so glad when he got knocked yeah. out. Well, it's funny you is. should say that. <laughs> who is it? <laughs> Don't say it. Right? Begins with A. Oh, <laughs> the name. <really? laughs> I've got to wait. We're going to talk about it oh, after, okay. right? We're going to talk about it after. You know, there's always a relative watching us, <laughs> <us. laughs> right? Right. So, I mean, you think about it. You just said it was boxers, and they've got mm. coaches who work with them who actually program their minds that way in thinking. Yeah. So, I'd say a tip for everybody: the winning is actually in the thought, in the mind. No matter what you're actually going for, no matter what you're going to do. If you're getting up for that interview tomorrow, start from tonight. You know, mm. you've got to reprogram the mind. You know, change your thinking; it changes mm -hmm. your life. Okay. Thank you, Chris, very, Thank you. very much. Pleasure. Pleasure. Okay, and we'll see you again next time on the show, obviously. Yes. Yes, yeah. it's here every week with us. I'll think about okay, it. Okay, so I hope this show has really helped you gear up for Christmas, but not just Christmas, in life in general, I would mm. say, because you are going to go through stress at different points in your life. But if you're going through something, obviously, that is really overwhelming you, and I know because I've been there before, please, and you need extra help, please do email me on chris at chriscbshow.tv. I'd love to be able to give you some advice and also point you in the right direction to organizations that can help you so please do get in touch otherwise have a lovely lovely evening and we'll see you again next time on the chrissy b show bye for now